Hi, I'm Amanda Freed. I'm Leah Amico. I'm Tariah Flowers. I'm Lovie Jung. I'm Mike Candrea, head softball coach of the women's Olympic softball team. Welcome to Sports School. segments we're going to talk about the principles of fielding a fly ball. Now remember outfield play this is the last line of defense. One of the most frightening things for young kids is the field of fly ball but it really isn't that hard. We're going to talk about the basic stance because obviously in the outfield you're furthest away from home plate. You've got a lot of ground to cover so you've got to be in a real athletic position to be able to move. Secondly we're going to talk about our approach to that fly ball. We're going to use what's called a drop step. And then third, we're going to talk about securing the catch on the fly ball. We're going to talk about our transition into our throw. And then we're going to show you a couple of specialty items. One may be feeling a fly ball off the fence, okay, and maybe talk a little bit about getting a good angle on that fly ball. So sit back and listen. We're going to begin by talking about the ready position. And with me today, I have Leah Miko, a two-time gold medalist with our Olympic team. And I'm going to ask Leah to kind of jump in and talk a little bit about her approach to outfield play. Uh, she's a tremendous outfielder, and she can give us some insight on what it's like to play this far from home plate. So, Leah, first of all, tell us a little bit about the ready position and how it differs from the infield to the outfield. Well, first of all, in the ready position, I want to make sure that I'm in a good sprinting position. I'm a lot further than any infielder. My job is going to be to either back up infielders on a ground ball or to be able to catch a fly ball and not let the ball get behind me. So what I want to do in my ready position is I want to make sure that I'm a little more upright. I'm not going to get low to the ground, but that I'm in a good position on the balls of my feet. My feet can be slightly staggered with my glove foot a little bit in front of my, my throwing hand foot. I'm in a ready position facing forward towards the pitcher. I want to make sure that no matter which side the ball is hit, I can react. I can drop to either my left or my right. So I don't want to turn sideways. I want to be straight forward. And one thing that I do as an outfielder so I don't get caught flat-footed on my heels is I actually, as a pitcher goes into her motion, I step in to my position and I'm on the balls of my feet as that ball's entering the zone so that I can react either way the ball is hit. Lee, I know there's two types of um, ready positions. You see some outfielders that will be more stationary with their feet moving and you'll see some that actually walk forward. Is there a preference for you? For me, I actually walk forward a little bit. So I know where I want to start, so I actually start a couple steps behind. I just slowly walk into that, and that's my timing to be ready as the pitcher enters the zone. Okay, thanks, Leah. The most important step in getting to that fly ball is our first step. The approach that we use in outfield play is called a drop step. And the drop step is nothing more than a way of us getting our hips and shoulders turned so that we can get in the spinner's position as quickly as possible and get behind the softball. Now I'm gonna ask Leah to go ahead and demonstrate what a drop step looks like and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is for a ball over my left shoulder. And as you can see right there, Leah turned, make sure she got her hips and shoulders turned the second thing is she uses her arms very well. A lot of times in outfield play, you'll see kids put a glove on their hand, and all of a sudden now they become a one-arm runner. They don't know how to run with two arms. And one of the things that we try to do is we have our outfielders get very used to running with their gloves. So every day when they warm up, guess what happens? We put a glove on our outfielders, and they learn to run with their glove. That glove should be nothing more than an extension of your hand. So watch how good of a job Leah does getting into that sprinter's position and using her, her glove hand as she sprints. Okay, that's very nice. Okay, that would be a ball to her throwing side. Now we would do the same thing on a ball going to her glove hand side. She opens up, turns and sprints. Now a lot of times the ball is going to be hit over your head. 
This is a time that you don't know whether to turn your glove hand side or turn to your throwing hand side, but it really doesn't matter. The key is making sure that you get yourself turned and you take a deep enough step so that you can go hard to find the ball. We'll have Leah demonstrate a ball right over her head. See how deep she gets, and now she's ready to go get the ball. That is the most interesting way and probably the most effective way of getting from point A to point B as quickly as possible, and that's the key to outfield play. Now we're going to talk about securing the catch. We've made a good first move. We've got an effective drop step. Now we're going to get to the ball. We're going to try to put our body in a position to secure the ball and make the catch. Now, Leah, let's talk about securing the catch as we get to the ball. What are some of the most important things as an outfielder? What I focus on is once I know that I've gotten far enough behind the ball that I can move through it to help me use my legs and give me a strong throw to my target, is I actually like to turn my body. I am turned a little bit with my glove in front of me, and as I come through, it's going to help me to keep my shoulders turned and my hips turned as I crow hop towards my target. The other thing that I want to make sure is that I'm not blocking myself, my vision, to the ball. So I want to make sure when I go up with my glove, I actually have my glove on my throwing hand side a little bit with my fingers facing up, with my palm facing forward. As I do that and I watch the ball come into my glove, I have my throwing hand right next to it so that I can secure the ball. Then I will actually go into my footwork, which is my crow hop, and I'm already slightly turned. So now all I have to do is bring my heel forward, turn, and you can get that girl out. Leah, now, let me ask you a question. What would happen if, say, you, you go back, you get behind the ball, which is a very important point she made. Uh, as an outfielder, the most important thing is get further than you need to get so that you're always moving forward to catch the ball. The most common mistake in outfield play is kids backpedaling or moving back as they catch the ball. One of the things we want to do is get further behind the ball than we think we need to, so that allows us to use our momentum to move forward. The other thing, though, sometimes is we get to the ball, and all of a sudden now we look up and we're in the sun. And I think this is important for you to understand. Leah, what kind of adjustments can you make to catch that ball in the sun? One thing that you can do is you can use your glove to actually block out the sun. So you see the ball, you put your glove up in front of your eyes, and the ball will actually fall out of the sun. And now you can actually follow it down and still make that catch. Another thing, sometimes it stays in the sun for a couple seconds and you really lose it. So what you want to do, if you notice right off the bat, the ball's not fa falling out of the sun, you want to actually, if you have time, is to change your angle of where you're looking. So slightly turn your head and now you won't be looking straight into the sun. And now you can still make that catch and make sure you can get that girl out. Well, yeah, that's a great tip. And those are very good tips in securing the catch. Um, we talked about footwork when we talked about ground balls. And Leah mentioned the crow hop. It's very important to understand she turns her body when she secures the ball because that puts her in a great position to go right into her crow hop, and now she can make a strong, accurate throw back into the infield. There's two important elements of a good outfielder. One is being able to react off the ball as quickly as possible, but the most important thing is taking a good path to the ball, taking a good angle to the ball. The further the ball is away from you, the deeper the angle you must take. The closer the ball is to you, the shallower the angle that you should take. The tough one is the ball right at her, the ball right over her head. And what you have to do here is you have to learn to make an adjustment. If I'm working with young athletes, I never want them to take their eye off the ball. So the one thing that we're going to have Leah show you is how we can turn one way and we can make an adjustment if we need to, to go the other way. And all she did there is turn her hips. There was no stop or hesitation. And that's how you make an adjustment on balls over your head. Okay, there's times when we're going to have to play balls off the fence. And as an outfielder, we can use either our glove to find the fence or we can use our throwing hand to find the fence. The key in this play is to get back to the fence as quick as you can, find the fence, and then you can always come back to make the catch. <laughs> yeah.
Yes. Yes. Very nice. Okay, now if the ball's her throwing side, she's going to use her throwing hand, find it, and catch. You can also see something if, if the ground ball gets to the fence. The one thing we want to do there is we're going to play the ball off the fence. She's going to gather over the ball like she's feeling a bunt, and then she's going to clear her fence with a quick step with her left foot, and then throw. She gets around the ball, steps, and throws. Good. Those are the two areas that you have to play the ball off the fence as an outfielder. To review our principles on fielding fly balls, remember the first thing we're going to do is get in a good athletic position and as an outfielder we're further away from home plate so we want to be a little more upright and we're able to move either right, left or back or forward. The other thing is there's two ways that people get into that position. Some will have stationary movement, some will actually move forward, but make sure that your shoulders are square to home plate so that you can move any way possible. Secondly, our approach to the fly ball, it's important that we take good angles. The harder the ball's hit, the deeper the angle, the closer the ball is to you, the more shallower the angle. And we want to begin our approach with a drop step. And the drop step is nothing more than a movement that we're going to make where we get our hips and shoulders turned toward our target, making sure that we get in a good sprinter's position, using both hands to run with. As we approach the fly ball, the one key thing is get behind the ball as much as possible. We always want to get back further than we need to so that now we can come forward to secure the catch. And we're going to secure the catch on our throwing hand side, making sure that we're not obstructing our vision, and then from there, with our shoulders and hip turned, we can lead with our heel, get into our crow hop, and make sure that we follow through. Outfield play can be a lot of fun. You see a lot of great plays, a lot of diving plays. Balls hit over the fence that are brought back into the ballpark. Remember, it's your last line of defense, so coaches don't neglect working with your outfielders.